previously on the Chris Hansen Conversation. Also on frequency and harmonics, I mean, there's this thing called harp. Yes. And harp. It's in three places on the planet right an, now. No, it's in Alaska, isn't it? Alaska is one. The other is uh, in the Antarctic. And there's one more in oh. a desert. <laughs> in the Antarctic. Yeah. Harp. Uh, vast arrays yeah. of uh, small towers do, sending signals. They're, they're saying they're picking up SETI signals, right? Uh, but they're not. They can also transmit. And they do transmit. Um, the latest Antarctica one was responsible for the earthquakes around Christchurch and what have you and so on and so you forth. You mean the tsunami in Japan and the one in New Zealand I, as well? I don't know. So, so I don't you're know saying the harp is, uh, is weaponized? I know it's weaponized, but that's all I know is it's weaponized. Weather control is weaponized. You take a look at some of the fires that mm -hmm. are being caused here and there. I mean, you see lasers in the, the background. The one in Hawaii, you mean? Maui. Hawaii as well. But there's a whole bigger picture there. You need to take a look at the bigger picture and follow the money. Who's buying up the land after it's burnt up? Well, and then people you, like Oprah. <laughs> You're shitting me, man. Come on. No, I mean, you take a look and, <laughs> and you'd be surprised what they're using that whole thing for. The, the one name that caught me was Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, together with Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen all of that. The yeah. Rock? Yeah, The Rock. But anyway, the point is not the personalities involved. Just follow the money and you okay. begin to see what's happening on a global scale. Take a look at the uh, what's happening with uh, Ukraine as well. And it don't, you know, look, a clown, a comedian becomes president. Yeah. That sounds a lot like, okay, where the, what skills did this guy have? And, and Ukraine is the money laundering capital of the United States and many other places in the world. That's where you go to clean your money. Uh, disappears uh, in all these weapon systems and... Come on, are you serious? Yeah, look, I can't go into too much detail because it's none of my business. I'm not interested in taking away your livelihood or what you put in the laundry. <laughs> but my job is just to serve humanity with whatever I can. Okay, no, no so, what you said was interesting so, enough already, man. When you put when you when you say the reverse technology, mm -hmm. uh of beyond Roswell and beyond Cosgrove, Colonel Cosgrove and all these yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. things and all of that. Right. If you take a look at what they have right now, that's flying in the skies and the technology is at here. Yeah. My technology is here. It's right. base level. Okay. Now, if I can teach people base level stuff and give them base level stuff, achieving the leap from this technology to that is very easy. The Byfield Brown effect together with the technology I'm using, gyroscopic uh, yeah. vortices, um, the leap is unreal. Even take a look at what they're studying and, and, and still have no answers to in the, um, what's that history channel um, program on um, Skinwalker Ranch? Oh, Skinwalker Ranch. Are yeah. you familiar with yeah, all that? Yeah, of course. That? Oh, yes, yeah. you talk about this I'm, on this program all the time. Yeah, but I'm not interested in the hoo-ha and oh, it's scary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't sleep at night. Ha, ha, ha. You know, I'm... Pfft. I'm interested in the technology. What are you using to measure? And what are you measuring? What are you seeing? What is the curvature of what you're doing? You know, and how, how do you map out what is underground and what's overground? And how do you generate that? Right. So that, that's my it's, interest in. Is their research basically what they use for their research? Correct. Correct. Right? Whether what, or not, it's, well, whether what, or not these things would be the right. What is the data? Equipment to use to get I'll, the data I, that I you, want, you're reporting. I want the data. Right. And and you only see what is exciting. You don't see the the data and, and where it points. Uh, well, uh, same with everything. It, it, I'm not doing it because I'm interested in the. Ooh, it's so interesting. Da 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 da. How does it work? You know, mm. if a ghost walk into this place and everybody goes, ah, you, it's my father, it's my this, it's my that. And you, you, the mind sees what it wants to see. Okay, you, you you can hallucinate. That's a Dr. Mel Gill I see and you, hear you, all the time on TV. You are you are a hypnotist, right? Clinical hypnotist. Mm -hmm. You know this. I can create a negative hallucination, which means that I can tell you that your uh, editor does not exist. No matter how much you look, you won't find him when you wake up. Boom, one, two, three, you wake up. 
where the hell is this guy? You know, holy crap. It, I said, and he's standing right in front of you. And that's a negative hallucination. Now, what's a positive hallucination? Well, when you walk out this door, you're going to see pink elephants all about this size running all over the place. <gasps> what the hell? You know, so on and so forth. So the mind is so powerful that you can generate an image and it will become real yeah. of somebody that passed on. Somebody right. had moved over or the place itself. Right. Now, the physics of the place can generate waves, standing waves that we're talking about in certain resonant peak frequencies. And this is what Ghostbusters and people like me do. We come into a place that has coat, uncoat, negative energy. We set off a certain frequency either through sounds, through chants, through machines. Yep. And we dissipate it. It's gone. What are we, Ghostbusters? Okay, you can use that language if you like. But if you, like I said about the technology, if you begin to realize how to use them, then nothing becomes magical anymore. Everything can be explained with technology. What about a God force? Well, what is that? Well, there's a part of our brain, you know, that is responsible for an interconnectedness yeah. with something divine. It's built into our genetic structure. There is a gene, a God gene, that's been turned on and capped so it doesn't die like all the other uh, chromosomes that die on you, that actually responds to something, quote unquote, higher than us. Okay. And we tend to want to worship something higher than us. I don't have that gene. <laughs> I don't. It's, Evidently. It's, <laughs> yeah, because 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 what you see as quote unquote God is a summation of your entire life and experiences and everything that points towards by anecdote a reality that you will cling to because it's it's the meaning to your life. If I took that meaning away, you'll have nothing. You'll collapse and you go what what the hell have I been believing and what the fuck is all this? I know where you're going with this, Doc. Yeah, but so my job is not to yeah. take it away. If yeah. you believe that this cup can, is going to send you to heaven, I'll say, okay, fantastic. Oh, 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 you know, do whatever. <laughs> I'll sing with you your hymns. <laughs> oh, holy cup of da da, runneth over. I, I'll help you, and then, <laughs> and then I'll walk away, and I probably won't come back. Oh, for fuck's <laughs> sake! Ah, sorry. <laughs> I am staunchly Catholic, but never mind. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't apologize. I mean, I'm I'm not rattled. I apologize to this guy here. My faith doesn't change because of this. Come on. There's okay. No, I'm not, my faith doesn't my change, faith because, doesn't change of because of this. Of course not. Yeah. I it's going to be, I don't, I don't want it be to very change. hard to explain, you know, but yes. I'm keeping the show secular anyway. Okay. Uh, and I, I always do my best to keep the show secular. But at least I can say is that I'm staunchly Catholic. And uh, that's cool, Doc. You know what you said? I can understand Look, where you're coming from as well. Chris, my job. Yeah. Uh, on this earth. Yeah. If you are Catholic, yeah. to make you a better Which Catholic. I am. Yeah. Uh, if you are Buddhist, to make you a better Buddhist. Mm -hmm. If you are Muslim, to make you a better Muslim. Mm -hmm. If you are, am I missing out any? A Hindu. <laughs> if you're, if you're a Hindu, to make you a better Hindu. Yeah. Zoroastrian, Zoroastrian as well. Yeah. If you believe in Zoro, yes. Yeah, <laughs> sure. That would be great. Makes, <laughs> Good makes <one>. no difference. <laughs> Good bloody one. <laughs> yeah. Zoroastrianism, man. Yeah. Came from yeah. the Sumerians, right? <laughs> yes, maybe the original religion. Okay, let me sum this up. Let me sum yeah. this up. Uh, uh, it's 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 two hours, man. It's been two hours. Oh, it's been two uh, hours? Oh, it has, it has. doesn't feel like two hours. Uh, yeah, I know. Oh, it happens wow. all the time, man. Everyone okay. says that to me. Is it, has yeah. it really been that long? Yeah, uh, yeah that's your talent. That's your ability. I think so. Being wow. Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> yeah, you know what we should do? Do you drink beer or something? No, I don't drink beer. What do you drink? I, I no alcohol. I, I, well, I can call myself a tea toddler, but uh, so I do I, have the. I, I don't drink also. Yeah. We should have coffee. We can. Beer. No problem. Let's have coffee with Chris. Sure. Uh, oh, that was my, that's the name of the last show. Oh, is that what it was called? The last show that didn't belong to me was called Kopi with Chris. No. Yes, really. 
Okay. <laughs> Chris over coffee. We should we should get that in there somewhere and then serve coffee for God's sake. I did ask you this, whether this, you would like coffee. You asked for water, Doc. Hello. I did know it was gonna be I'm, two hours. Uh, you're the one that's ADHD okay. now. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's cool. Yeah. Anyway, Doc, thanks so very much for being on the show, man. Hey, my um, pleasure. Really, and and just 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 to just sum this up just a little bit. So the next thing for Dr. Mel Gill is of course to get the Mel, Dr. Mel Gill Foundation going with your craft and, and, and uh, well, there's that, more that, that, that sunken city. Well, the, 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 no, the <laughs> foundation is already active. We yeah, I know have that, trained yeah. a lot of uh, uh, teachers to yeah. go back into poor communities. Uh, we train them with super learning okay. technologies and they go back into their villages and what have you. Mm -hmm. And they train their students to go from uh, E and F to A students. Okay. Uh, things that in Singapore people pay thousands of dollars for, for their kids. We do it for nothing, for free. Um, so that's what the, the foundation has been doing and, and sustaining. That's been the main thrust okay. uh, of what we're doing. Everything else is all research based, uh, except for one or two um, actual things we're working with, with desalination plants. Uh, right now we're using solar uh, and, and a concentrated form of solar, which is a little bit different from the regular solar that people use. Right. And it's, it's in a closed system. And, and we're trying to solve the problem of sludge, you know, the, the saline sludge that comes out okay. from that. We are working, and the research part is where we're working on extracting from that sludge salt and separating it from at least um, 40 minerals. Uh, that can be used in technology. So we have ionic plates and put it in this and that, and we're trying to separate that. So we're not, we're not hundred percent there, but I think give us another two years that okay. technology should be such that we should be able to do that. And if my other technology works and the electricity to run it is no longer solar, but that. Right. Yeah. And so everybody so on there's planet, some form of correlation somewhere. For now, for now, help it's piggybacking. The out. research is piggybacking yeah, on yeah. other research and yeah, so on and so forth. Yeah. So that's what we're and doing. And what's going to happen to the sunken city in the Black Sea, man? We don't have the uh, resources to go after it. Oh, come on. No, one and a half kilometers is a lot of pressure. Yeah. And the craft that you need... We'll have to borrow from that billionaire who got crushed. <laughs> no, I just <laughs> don't. That's a bad joke. I won't, I won't even go. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I went there. Um, <laughs> no offense to billionaires out there, but you're stupid <laughs> to cut corners. Um, but um, there's no ROI. There's no payback in that for us and okay. for humanity at large. Yes, it's an interesting thing. And yes, we found maybe about three, four, five pyramids already under the water there in the Black Sea. And and we also have uh, proven beyond a shadow of a doubt with historical texts and writings in Bulgaria that um, at one point, 70 something thousand years ago, the Black Sea was once fresh water. And because of the uh, rift, a huge earth moving uh, event, the uh, Bosphorus uh, Sea. The pole shift. The, yeah, the pole shift. And the whole uh, Bosphorus Straits Canal was mm -hmm. created. Mm -hmm. And so the Mediterranean rushed in and filled it. And so when you measure the sal salinity of the water in the Black Sea, it's brackish, but it's not the same as the concentrations you find in the Mediterranean. So this pole shift thing is not, nothing to do with the, the theory of the younger dryers. The, the what? The theory on, of the younger dryers. Younger that, dryers? That epoch in time that it is theorized uh, that um, we were hit by multiple fragments of a comet and that we entered into a sort of a mass extinction event that saw the Earth's temperature plummet and then most of the population died. And then after that, civilization came back again and hence... Go Beckley Tepe was built. You know, that, that was Graham Hancock's theory. Mm. Uh, but if you're saying pole shift and all that, you know, it seems to go way beyond. Was it before. Graham? Why would Graham Hancock say that? He did. Younger Dryas. He talks about it all the time. You see, 
there is another fellow. You, if you get his books, you get that theory mm -hmm. there. Uh, Emmanuel Velikovsky mm -hmm. wrote a whole bunch of uh, books, one of which he's uh, famous for is called Planets in Collision mm -hmm. uh, or Worlds in Collision, mm -hmm. I think it was called. And in that, he outlined that theory about pole shifts and how it happens and yep. so on and so forth. And at one point in our history, we didn't have a moon. Yeah, yeah, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, all of historical texts that go back more than a hundred thousand years ago yeah. seem to suggest that. And so that begs the question: What is the moon, and where does it come from, and so on and so forth? It's artificial, and you, man. You, you, then you talk about <laughs> it's uh, fucking artificial, man. Dog, come on. <laughs> then, I, then I want to ask about the propulsion systems, and I want to ask about the materials. <laughs> I want to know how it works. Because when they drop, when NASA dropped one of the uh, one of the lunar modules, I think. Onto the moon as it took off. It was a nuclear device. Was it a nuclear device? Yeah. yeah they, oh, come on. No, it, it, at first it was the, the dropping of the module, they say. Yeah. But it was a nuclear and device. It, and, it was, and the moon rang like a bell. Yes, correct. Yeah. Why would they fucking drop a nuclear device on the moon? To see what would happen. What? Yeah. Are you freaking but, but, nuts but, but or look what? Look it up, look it up, look it up. Don't, no, don't I've been looking it up. Yeah. I never heard about a nuclear device. I've only heard about... Just, just look it up. ...about the lunar module that dropped... Nuclear the bomb on the moon. Boom. Just, just that. Holy shit. Yes, holy shit is great. Yeah. Fuck that. Um, okay. I, I, I've, always, I've always read about the limb being dropped. They call it the limb, right? The lunar module. Mm. And, and, and just to see how, you know, what will happen. It, you know, to test the seismic uh, 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 waves on what's going to happen with, with the moon. They already knew. And it rang. Yeah. For a long time, it rang like the moon's hollow. Right. Hmm. You know, <laughs> um, the theory about every 12,000 years, yeah. we have a polar shift. Yeah. Accompanied or not accompanied by massive tectonic shifts, yeah. we don't know. Yeah. Uh, but historical records seem to suggest that most countries are not where they were yep. more than 12,000 years ago. Right. Uh, that things have shifted. Yeah. Uh, and when you take a look at ancient civilizations, uh -huh. right, let's say there was a far more advanced nation that used uh, pyramids, not as tombs, but as uh, energy devices. Because the, the, when I studied, the pyramids and what it had. I had constructed pyramids in my home and put milk into one and milk outside to see if it would work and you align it north, south, you know, all that nonsense. Yep. Uh, it's true. The milk turned into yogurt that was inside the pyramid. The one outside rotted away and you will find fungus and all these other things. And I repeated that several times to see if it works. Oh boy. The only person that had a patent on the pyramid was a Czechoslovakian guy named Max Durbel. And Max Durbel patented the pyramid shape for a shaver. You know, each Russian, uh, sorry, each Czech Republic uh, uh, person blade. Yeah. was uh, soldier was yeah. issued a single razor blade to save money. And each every time they finished, they would put it under the pyramid, and it would sharpen. The blade would sharpen by itself, and the next morning they'll have a sharp one. No way. There's a patent for it. Max Fuck Durbel, look it up. Hell. D R B A L. Now. When I studied all of this, I figured out that there must be something more at work. If there's an energy field, will it work if I hung it? You see, because I hung it in a vacuum. In, in those days, I could get bell jars. Mm -hmm. I don't know where. And I created a vacuum with these pumps, right? Right. I think it was penis enlargement pumps. I'm not sure. But we used the same. <laughs> what the, 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 the same pumps. Anyway, <laughs> the point was we hung it. And when we started to move... <laughs> To move that pyramid that we hung, that we made out of wood and then paper and then metal. The metal didn't work so well. The wood and paper were much easier to uh, manipulate and work with, but paper was best. I don't know why. Uh, very thick. Uh, the, the stuff you make cards from, you know, that kind of yeah, paper, man. right? Okay. And we found that the, the pyramid would align itself on a string to north-south. Now, wait a minute. That's a force at work. What is that force? So I, 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 conjecture that the first person to discover what that force is and and it's uh the nature of that force and how to utilize it will win the nobel prize because it's a new form of uh you know we cannot be so conceited to think we know everything yeah, now yeah, we don't yeah, really yeah, yeah. and there's a new kind of energy that may 
have been used by these ancient civilizations. But when the tectonic shift occurred along with the pole shift, well, all of that technology will be gone. Now think of what will happen now. For instance, for yeah. instance, right? Say the North Pole becomes the South, South becomes the North. As it is, they're moving about, is it three feet uh, a year? Yeah, something the, like the, that. The North Pole already. Like that. Yeah. And, and soon the North Pole will be somewhere near Ze- New Zealand. Yeah. And the South Pole will be there. They'll all be topsy turvy. And, and everything we ever knew, all the technology now becomes useless. Yeah. You know, everything we're building underground here in this, you know, da 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 and all of that, gone. Gone. Yeah. So, now the survivors, let's say a fraction of Earth survives, 100,000, 500,000 people. Now they're going to have to start fires with flints because matches don't work anymore. Yeah. They, they're no yeah. longer we'll, there. We'll go back to even worse to the we're dark ages, man. We're going back to the dark ages and we're going to start again and we're going to reinvent everything. Yeah, and then we're going to have amnesia again. Exactly. And and we're finding out in the old Sumerian text that that uh, Pythagoras theorem mm. was discovered more than 12,000 years before Pythagoras. <laughs> so, hello, these are in the Sumerian text. So, are we discovering new things or yeah. rediscovering what we knew once? Yeah. And so maybe the part of us in, in history that was not allowed to grow was the part where these new technologies given to us by the quote unquote gods in those days and agriculture, obviously not on earth, uh, given to us by God knows what and so on and so forth. Uh, is it possible that there are groups that are suppressing these technologies because they want to make money? Yep. Imagine if Tesla was was allowed with his widened cliff uh, towers to be able to send energy, electricity to another part of the world. Now, all of us would have free energy instead of charging into uh, little plugs with and, our and wires. And paying for it. Too. Right. And who are the <laughs> mega billionaires that made money off the copper right. that was produced, all the steel that was produced, all these other- Tungsten. Uh, and, and other- mm. Uh, metals that yeah. were produced and so on and so forth just to make uh, so much obscene money and make everybody so impoverished yep. that they wouldn't be able to afford it. And that, all that is what I'm trying to do is to change the balance of that. Yeah. So that now my way of eradicating poverty in the world is to teach people how to become entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. sell something. Mm-hmm. And I like uh, give the Nobel Prize to the man who invented the penis enlargement pump. Okay. I thought it was a woman that did that. <laughs> was it? Yeah, she was not satisfied with <laughs> what was out there. So, so she invented it. And <laughs> you should see the first one. <laughs> Her husband said, no, <laughs> it'll never happen. So, oh, wow. <laughs> My brain went into a different direction just <laughs> Very now. Very much so. Uh, yeah. yeah. Woo. <laughs> so, coming back to the technology, right? Um, imagine... If I were successful, yeah, I teach people to become entrepreneurs, sell a product, a service, yours or somebody else's, your product or somebody else's product or knowledge in the world. And that's how you will make your money. You are selling a service and that service is to turn people's social voices, mediocre voices into powerful resonating voices like yours. Um, when you succeed in doing that on scale, you become a multimillionaire. Um, here, here's the easiest way to make money. And everybody want to know how to make money now. Here's the way. Put your knowledge into a course and sell that course for $200. $200. That's not much. $200 for a course, online course, maybe six hours, eight hours. Sell that course to 5,000 people. Can you find 5,000 people? Well, come on this podcast. There are 5,000 people or more listening to this right now. What's $200 times 5,000? That's a million dollars right there. Easiest way? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that when you can pay your rent and you can pay for your food, then you don't have to worry about these things and go get a nine to five job where people have bought your time away from your family and away from the things you love. Corporates are doing that. You become a high, you go to school. Yes. What are you studying for? You're studying to become a highly paid slave to a company, highly paid, maybe 10, 15,000 a month. Yeah. But you, they bought your time mm. and then you retire at 40, 50, 60 and you find that you don't even have any enough in the bank. Somebody's doling out to you. And my God, is that the way to live? No. 
uh, you don't have much time on earth. We all don't. We're going to die. That's without a doubt. You don't have much time. So, but people are acting like they do. Mm-hmm. They're going out and having coffee and doing this and doing the regular stuff. And like they, they wake up and repeat the same thing. How about we all come together and contribute to something that changes humanity as a whole? So that what you leave behind is a planet that's a lot better than when you found it. So here, here. Th- that's what I'm trying to do. Here, here. And you're doing the same and with this podcast. I'm, I salute you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I, I gave up on my Facebook thing. This is too much work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was. And I, and I just dived into everything else I was doing. Well, I followed you on your Facebook and I knew exactly that you, where you were in Varna, your lovely house there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. And uh, it's always been interesting reading about your time in Varna yeah, when you were posting. Anyways. I, I, I'll tell you one story. Okay, Doc. So I was called to Varna to do a seminar. So mm-hmm. I said, I will. And da, 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 I did my meta secret thing. And then another person called me, who is now my best friend forever, Maria Eleva. Mm-hmm. She's an organizer for uh, seminars for gurus, quote unquote. I was a quote unquote guru. Mm-hmm. So I, I tried to cure that people mm-hmm. of that. You know, by using bad words and what have you. And they said, no, this doesn't sound like a guru. I don't think I'll follow him. I said, she'll follow me. I'll show you a hole you can drop into. Um, so she said, after the seminar, she, she said, uh, come, I want, to, I want you to touch the Black Sea. Bless it for us. Because they thought I had these extraordinary abilities. Which, which Chris, which I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do, uh, but I, I, can't, I can't even begin to tell you about that. But but anyway, they, I had a near death experience, you know, and, and so when uh-huh. I came back, I came back with some gifts, and those were one of the gifts. Uh, so I, I put my feet in the water, mm. and straight away, I mean, I might, I rolled up my pants, and the, the water came up to my shins, and I said, I've been here before, and that's what I told her, I've been here before, and she said, What do you mean? You you came to Barna to do seminars before? I said, No, this the and I gave her a date, 70,000 years ago, I was here. I don't know how I know this. I know this, but my house was south somewhere. So a large group of, of followers, seminar followers, I'm talking about 15 of them got together, said Mel Gill said he was here before in a past life. So they assumed it was past life. I, I have to assume that as well. So uh, I, they got a map and I pointed out to where it was in a place called Primorsko at that uh, particular location. My house is there. Okay. Right there. And it's next to a town called Sozopol. I, I don't know it, what it was. So the very next day, three cars and a convoy went to the south, 170 kilometers south towards the Turkish border. And, uh, and they said, where, where is it? I said, uh, I'm so sorry guys about your car. I'm going to apologize ahead of time, but we need to go to the water because my house is near the water and it said describe it they said well there's a rock down here i used to sit on the rock to watch the ships go into the town nearby and uh then there's a little curve up and there's a there's a bay sort of thing where some of my goats apparently uh i had goats <laughs> <laughs> we could tell so many jokes about that but and my house was above there it's, it's a whole different story and I was describing in absolute detail because I was, while watching the world, I was seeing something and these abilities don't usually come out until I have a particular need. Like say, for instance, when we were shooting some of the incredible tales things, you can feel, you can see, you can, you know, what's there. I know what's there. I can see. So, uh, see dead people that da, 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 da. try, <laughs> try to avoid that because that involves conversations and so on. So <laughs> they're all loopy conversations. But anyway, long story short, we went down and the cars had to go through the jungle. There was a trail, fortunately. So cars were being scraped by bushes, you know. Mel, we're going to kill you. My <laughs> God, are you sure? Where the hell are you leading us? About 30 minutes later, we come out to the open field. I start bawling. I start crying. Uh, I see the whole place and I'm just like a baby crying. I, it's never happened before. And so I walk out and I walk down this trail, whatever you call it, trail, and saw the rock. I said, that's the rock. I said, yeah. I sat on that rock, Chris, and for the first time closed my eyes and I saw me then as a Tracian warrior 
And I look like Oblix, you know, for Asterix Oblix, Oblix yeah. I look exactly <laughs> like Oblix with the red beard. Ugly as fuck. I, 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 I'm not even good looking fellow, but just, just then I sat there, very simple mind. And then the connection was made that that person and I here are the same person, the same soul. You were never born. You never died. You, uh, you're just taking up different forms. That revelation just opened up a whole bunch of stuff. And then, of course, all these followers are sitting down and they were saying, oh, yes, yes, I was your son. And then I was your daughter <laughs> and I was your thing. And said, no, you were my favorite goat. I loved working with you. And I said, shut the fuck up. I'm just trying to have a moment. And they wouldn't let me have my moment. And then some of them were rushing up the hill. Oh, look, look, Mel described this bay up here that everybody was going to. And they went up and they found a... Uh, foundation, which is a huge rock. Right, and I right. told them there's another foundation in front and they found that other foundation. That was where we had the swing. My wife and I, or goat and I, I'm not sure, <laughs> were watching the ships go down. And, and, and I showed them where I actually, I told Maria only where I buried some, uh, weapons and money and stuff. And, this you may have to cut off some of it. <laughs> we found them later in another no. trip. Yes, I knew exactly where I put you found them. them next to the house. I knew where it was. I knew exactly, and they, we found the stones of a remnant of a house that's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years old. Oh, no, I mean years old. <laughs> and so that obviously is the house. And uh, something else extraordinary happened was um, uh, the person. Wow, this is emotional. Take your time. I can't get through this. Take your time, though. <clears throat> what? Shit. I need water. There's no more water, huh? There's no more water. So sorry. Hey, or, Kai, or, if or, you don't mind. If you don't mind. Some, something stronger, maybe. Something stronger. No, right? Water, water, water. I'm just kidding. Strong, cool water. Um, the person that I was having some difficulties with, uh, was there, uh, okay. and had, uh, died. And so came back and I had to deal with this particular person and my God, suddenly I understood the nature of what was happening and the difficulties that were taking place. I understood them. And then slowly I expanded this ability to be able to see relationships. And I found that I was able to tell relationships between people. I was able to tell if I'm sitting here to know what your karmic bond is and just find out. And I, I don't talk about it a lot. And see, in, in line with everything else, I'm going to talk about it now. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't tell a lot of people because there'll be a long line outside my door saying, touch me, heal me, you know, da, 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 da. And I just, you can't, you know, some things are meant to be. So, it gave me an ability to be able to recognize that um, the veracity of what I found. Uh, they said, you saw ships going to the, to the town. I said, yeah, the town you call Sozopol was not called Sozopol. It was starting with A. It, at that time, I think it's something to do with Apollo, you know, the god mm -hmm. Apollo. And uh, it's Greek. Said, yeah, mm -hmm. Greek. And, um, and the Greek influence was much earlier than you and I had presumed. And, um, and they said, yeah, the old name for Suzopo is Apollonia. Ah, <laughs> Prince in the Revolution, man, Purple Rain, Apollonia, Apollonia, man. Yeah, Apollonia, yeah. <laughs> well, Apollonia was the old name. And uh, I said, yeah, Apollonia sounds right. That's where we were. Mm -hmm. And uh, whoever had died, died then, came back from Apollonia into Singapore at that point. So when we live on earth, everything that we see that we think is important is not important. Everything that we feel is real. It's not real. Uh, what is real is what is inside of you, inside of each and every one of you that survives this body that survives your circumstance. And so that made my counseling and my radio and everything I did more, um, poignant, you know, more important that whoever comes to me, I will help. 
as much as possible. So in the last 10 years that I've been doing this, I never charge anybody anything. Zero. The only thing I do is seminars, you know, like, okay, come pay for the seminars because, you know, my, my children have bad habits like eating and paying rent. <laughs> so I got to take care of those things. Um, but I don't hoard things. In fact, I've been funding my foundation since that time of that billionaire right. uh, myself. And if you look at my foundation page, there's nowhere to collect money. Nowhere. Uh, I do it myself. Everything I earn, everything I do goes into literally the foundation. I keep less than 10% to pay for bills and coffee, you know, <laughs> so on and so forth. So my message to everybody is you were never born and you will never die. That you go on and whatever you leave behind, you cannot choose to e the exit for you know, when you leave this place. Uh, I've seen so many of my cousin who was uh, three years younger than I was die suddenly in a sleep uh, two weeks ago. My father, you know, the one of the best athletes of Singapore, Olympian, Singapore's oldest Olympian, wanted to live to 100, made it to 96. I thought that was good. Yeah. Um, you, you don't know when is your time. Uh, the taxi driver who died in the middle of the road, you know, a few, few weeks ago, driving too fast for some reason. People who crossed the road who died, and you, you think they died too young, but my God, you know, who's to say? So if you wake up tomorrow, in, your nine to five is not that important. Your house that you build that you pay for is not important. In fact, you don't even own it in reality, but that's a whole different thing. I'll put in jail if I explain that. But um, you own nothing. You own absolutely nothing. Uh, so that's why I do what I do. Uh, pushing humanity forward. Tesla died. Mm, poverty ridden. I might end up the same way. I don't know. But my friend is starting a, 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 an academy with a lot of psychology courses and stuff. So I'm fortunate enough to be asked to create some of them for him. So I did. And so maybe that might bring in something. But all in all, it, I begin to realize that if you have an opportunity to sit with me, I'm going to show you the side of you that lives forever and that you're going to feel unsettled and you're going to wish you never met me. Because I'll ask, what the fuck are you doing? You're sitting down, you're literally going through life, masturbating through everything and not paying attention to what needs to be paid attention to, the people around you. Because they, you will see again, but at some point, um, anything you can do for them, you carry forward into your next, uh, uh, the other side with blessings and thanks of the people you've helped. When I had my near death experience, because I lost my arm in a mountain climbing accident, uh, 18, 19 years old, <clears throat> I was dead for 20 minutes, right? So they revived me and no brain damage, but maybe there was, that's why I studied psych <laughs> psychology, I have no idea. <laughs> Came back with some gifts, but when I was on the other side, there were so many experiences and I'll write about them later, uh, but one I want to tell everybody, and maybe close the show on, yeah, is that the the being of light that was there with a bluish color robe and long hair looked like Jesus Christ, but uh, could have been the lead singer from Chris Kiss. I'm not sure. But um, at that time, that was my training, being raised in a Methodist school. You know, the, this is what I was taught to expect and believe. And I, the being said, uh, son, it's not yet time. You have to go back. And uh, I argued with the being. I said, well, if I have to go back, do you mind if I just take a look around and see what's here? You know, da, 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 da. Actually, I thought I was tricking him. He said, okay, he just went, let me go. Now that person, if you're my classmate listening to this, died. If you're my mother listening to this, that's not your son anymore. He didn't come back. He chose to stay. He didn't want to come back. He didn't want to come back living a life with one arm. He couldn't take it. So I volunteered whoever I was, and that's a whole nother program. I know who exactly that person is 
took over and said, I'll come back. And along with that came another force. And that's another program. And so I came back and I which <laughs> we're talking technology. This is like taking leaps and bounds oh, into an area that gosh. we're talking about demigods and da, 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 da. Do they exist and how do they exist and in what capacity and uh, what kind of resonant state is that? Can I bring it forward? Yes. Can I talk about it? Yes. Can I give you answers that you want? Yes. But I don't do it because it's, it's like a circus show, you know, for what? You know, it, it, it ultimately is no purpose. It, yeah. So what if you know your future? What are you going to do about it? You know, I can tell you your future right now. You're going to die. <laughs> That's it. You, nothing, nothing. You know, I'm going to earn a million bucks and put it in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> then what? B b then I'm going to relax. Then what? I'm going to relax until I die. Well, yes, exactly. <laughs> what the hell? Help as many people as possible. So, when I came back, uh, I came back with the understanding of this first event that happened when I went over because I was greeted by some other being, angel, I don't know what you want to call it, no wings. So he said, there's a hall of memories. You want to go in there and take a look? I said, what, what the hell is a hall of memories? Uh, and he, she, because I couldn't tell he or she, uh, uh, whole memories is where you remember everything, everything that happened you, yeah. in your yeah. life, right? Yeah, everyone's. I said, sure. Well, mm. to do that, let's do that. And I, and I walked in, there were no doors and I don't know how the hell I got into it, but I did. And I sat down in a very comfortable wooden bench. I don't know how to explain it also. And uh, I just sat there and I watched everything and it was in 3D. I mean, like I had goggles on, but not. And, uh, and I remember in when I was in school, in in this one guy was hitting me in the back of my head a lot during class, and he kept stealing my pocket money and everything else. And sometimes I'll have nothing. And I found an opportunity during recess. He was at the top of these stairs to push him down, and I did. And mind you, this is a little kid, right? Just pushing him down. I think I was barely eight, nine years old. Pushed the guy down. He fell. Dum 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 dum, and. Uh, in the Hall of Memories, I not only saw that, I felt it from his perspective. Mm. I felt every hit, every you uh, felt the pain. pain and, that. and with that, that warm gush of blood, yeah. I felt that mm. warm gush of blood. And the embarrassment that happened when everybody laughed. Because kids are cruel. You know, this is entertainment yep. for them. And so it, the embarrassment and something else happened. There was a brain damage from the fall. And so he was scheduled to become, I saw the timeline. He was scheduled to become a doctor, but he became a, a preacher instead. I won't mention his name because he's still alive. He's still on earth and he might get angry with the fact that I pushed him. But anyway, I'm telling the story for the first time. So uh, it changed because of that inability to remember, do whatever, da, da, da. And he chose this preacher thing. And he's still a preacher right now in a church here. And is that for the good or bad? I Not my place to say. But the point is, I altered somebody's timeline as a child. Now, flash forward to secondary two. I'm coming home and there's an Indian woman sitting on the side uh, on a cloth or something like that. Or maybe a, one of her clothing. And she didn't look up at me and I took up all the change I had, which was, you know, a bunch of coins. In those days, a bunch of coins were rich. Yep. You know, you had a lot of money. So I, I gave it all to her and I started to walk away, you know, thinking, you know, I'm going to go to heaven. You know, this is what they taught us in school. You do good and you go there. And then she picked it up and threw it at me, the coins. Mm -hmm. I was uh, shocked. And, and uh, I, I started picking up the coins and I walked away, showing her the finger and said, you know, fuck off, then you don't want this. And as I walked away, I felt an urge and I turned around. It was a such a powerful urge. I turned around and went to the chicken rice shop. And in those days, they sell chicken rice and put it in this paper. Yep, you know, yep. they wrapped up this they brown paper, yeah. right? Put it in that paper with all the fixings and everything. And I brought it and I, you know, carefully put it in front of her in case, you know, da, 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 da. And I don't know why I did that. She just threw money at me and it could hurt me with the chicken rice. I mean, I have to wash my uniform all over again. So gave it to her and she never looked at me, just 
opened it, started eating straight away. No clean hands, nothing. Just washed and started eating. Looked like she hadn't showered for weeks, you know. Smelled like that too. So I walked away thinking, okay, for sure I'm going to go to heaven. Now in the Hall of Memories, I heard her speak uh, in her mind. Right. I am not a beggar. <laughs> Threw it at me. Like, well, okay, she was not a beggar. She didn't want my money. Mm. And uh, when I put the chicken rice down, she kept saying in her mind, thank you, thank you, thank you. She hadn't eaten for days and she was living off the street. But something else happened, Chris, uh, that I didn't know, walking away, going home and trying to explain to my parents what happened to my pocket money. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, She was reminded of her son the same age and when he was in school and this and that and it brought back memories because she was very angry with the son because he had married a woman that was a total bitch and i i can say bitch right sure Uh, okay uh total bitch and they had a fight and and she found herself out of the house and she didn't want to come back she had so much pride remember this is the woman i'm not a beggar yeah and she just left. And for about a year plus, she was on the streets in Singapore. Could, no, nobody knew where she was because she, she was from the East Coast side. But here she was in the north of the island near Sembawang and all that. And, um, and, um, and because of that, she missed her son. So she took the coins in those days, 10 cents, I think, put in the thing and called. And the son came and picked her up. And she became, her timeline shifted from dying on the street. Uh, out of some disease, pneumonia or something, to turning to become the best grandmother this child had ever had. So everything we do on the planet has got an impact on someone's has life. Has got an impact on someone's lives, not negative or positive. Now you may not see the impact, but it will happen. You give someone money, and it changes their life. That's why this billionaire fuck clown that didn't. <laughs> could have impacted so many lives and pushed forward humanity much faster, but he's going to see the impact it had on him. Uh, He's going to think his God is behind him and helping him, but it's not. It's something else. It's a very selfish thing. But here's the other thing as well. If you don't give and you hold back, well, guess what? The thing that could have changed, the timeline that could have changed, you will experience that. As well, you will feel the suffering of the people you chose not to help. This is karmic. Helping or not helping is a choice. Saying or not saying is a choice. Defending or not defending is a choice. Doing or not doing is a choice. All a choice. And it has impact and it has a consequence. And if you, please, for God's sake, believe me, consequence in that hall of memories is like an unlubricated dildo. It's going <laughs> to hit you really hard. <laughs> so pay attention to if you can help someone, help wherever you can. If somebody asks you for anything, please, for God's sake, give. Don't hold back. And you'd be surprised. Give whatever you can. You don't have to give the whole house and everything else, but just give what you can. I think there's some teachings that teach that in yes, some religions yes, as yes, well. Yes, of course. But this is the further impact, uh, quote unquote, the science behind it is that we all go to the same place. Doesn't matter who you are, black, white, green, yellow, brown, blue. Uh, we're all going to go to the same place. And that place, I don't know what you want to call it, the realm of masters. That's where we develop and become better and better and better from one life to the next life to the next life. So earth is not a friendly place because people are, living delusional thoughts about what they think is right. And people are killing each other over what they think is right. You're a child in the middle of a war-torn country and that child dies as a result of your bullets and your bombs. You will feel that on the other side, no matter what your theology teaches you. Doc, it's been a fantastic few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's about an hour ago. I said it's been two hours. And now it's like another hour has gone by, but it's been riveting, man. Yeah, that happened on my wedding night too. <laughs>
Well, that long, huh? <laughs> That's what she said at first. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Thanks, dog, so much, really. Uh, we've, we've had, uh, wow, a great time with Dr. Mel Gill. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, this is good, definitely going to be a three parter, right, Kai? Mm. Likely. The guy said, you hear what he said? He said, I didn't record any of it. <laughs> well, I hope you guys, uh, please do do enjoy this episode. Really. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's going to be two or three chapters after we do post-production. I'm not sure how it's, it's going to turn out yet. But uh, it's been a great time, dog. Really, it's been great seeing Pleasure you again as well. Really, man. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, man. Good to see you. And uh, really, uh, Stay tuned on what's happening with Dr. Mel Gill. Uh, take a look at his at the Dr. Mel Gill Foundation as well online. Check it out. Check out what he's doing. It's real, real great stuff that he's doing, man. I mean, to Under, me, understated. I'm not, I'm not trying to attract too much attention. Although, that being said, three hours here. Holy hey, crap. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot has been said. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but don't give out my phone number or email or address or anything. No, no, no. I would not. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm governed by PDPA too, like in most of us, uh, all our citizens, anyway. I'm very happy in my little hidden corner of Singapore, so yeah. not being found. But yes. I will, I will come to Varna to meet you for sure. You will. I will. Yeah, there's a nice coffee shop near my house. That's what I'm looking here forward in to. in Singapore as well. Ah, okay. I'll invite you for that coffee. We'll sit date. down and talk. Yeah, that's a date. You got it. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we are halfway through season four. Uh, more to come. Uh, this is going to be one hell of a long season. Stay safe until the next time, okay? This is Chris Hansen. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Mm.